So this material has to somehow get to a refinery. And clearly you could put refineries right there, but then you'd also have to get the product from those refineries to some place. It can go in a variety of ways. You could put it in tanker trucks and, and run diesel fuel 18-wheeler trucks to truck it down to where it's used. You could uh, put it on rail cars. You could have a train take it down. The cheapest form of transportation is to put it in a pipeline and send it down a pipe to the refineries and to the end user spots. The refinery hub in the United States is in Cushing, Oklahoma. And certainly, Houston is also a very large oil city, which also brings in oil that's imported up through the Gulf. This brings us to an interesting conversation that's going on in America right now over the year of 2014 and into 2015. And that's about a controversy about a pipeline. It's called the XL pipeline. And actually, it's only one part of this pipeline. As you can see in this map, this pipeline already exists. It's only this last phase, this fourth phase, that is under this political scrutiny that has polarized much of the debate. The pipeline exists right now. It comes from the Canadian tar sands. It goes east across the country and then goes south. There are segments of this pipeline that connect from Cushing to Houston that are being built. Other sections have already been built. And the one that's under controversy is the section that would go diagonally from Canada down to Cushing, Oklahoma. This is a large pipeline, about a meter in diameter pipe. But this is not unusual. We have pipelines like this crisscrossing North America today. Here's another map that actually shows many of the large existing pipelines. One more pipeline is not suddenly become an environmental hazard. In fact, if you're going to move that oil from Canada to a refinery, you've got to move it in some manner. There have been accidents with putting it on trucks. There's been accidents putting it on a railroad. Pipes are the safest manner of transportation. Oh my gosh, what if the pipeline breaks and it starts spilling? Well, guess what? You turn off a valve. Oh, what if the valve breaks? Well, then you turn off the next valve. You have a valve every mile or so, right? This is a very safe, environmentally friendly way to transport the material. There are arguments on the pro side that says, wow, this is great. This is wonderful for America. Look how many jobs this is going to create. Uh, I don't know about that argument either. It's wonderful for Canada. That's who we're buying the resource from. And in terms of jobs, well, you're making a pipeline, but we've got all sorts of pipelines that are being made across the country. Yeah, there's a few more jobs making this for a temporary time until the pipeline's built. The real controversy over the XL pipeline is a controversy over making fossil fuels even cheaper and even more integral to the North American economy. The people who say, don't build the pipeline, are saying, effectively, we want oil prices to rise. Because then, renewable energy sources will become more cost effective, and we can eventually stop burning carbon fuels. The people who want the pipeline are saying, inexpensive energy resources is good for the economy, good for the consumer, good for the country, and this is a way to ensure that they stay less expensive because we can increase our domestic supply. Well, if you call it domestic supply, North American supply. Another interesting way to look at the subject is how much we currently import from outside of North America. And that number is surprisingly small. It's on the order of 10% of our total oil use. The U.S. doesn't make all of its own oil, but we do import quite a bit from Canada. If we wanted to get that number down to zero, if we wanted to be completely self-sufficient in oil in North America, the pipeline or other easy modes of transportation to get the tar sands from Canada to the U.S. is certainly the way to do it. 
So the controversy has become very politicized. I think most people who go off spouting about it, unfortunately some of the politicians as well, are thinking, aha, that one party wants it to happen, so it must be bad. Or they're thinking, wow, that party doesn't want it to happen, so it must be good, without understanding the real issues that are at play. One way or another, since oil is a commodity, oil has a certain price, as long as they can produce it in Canada below the price that it's going at at a market price, then we're going to buy it from Canada. And if we can get it with a lower transportation cost, we'll probably try to do so. We don't build the pipeline. Canada, which is sitting on a, a gold mine, well, really, it's an oil mine, all right, may make, make other pipelines or may make other transportation venues to be able to sell this commodity that they can export. One of the things that's bothered me about a controversy over a pipeline is that it's a bit misplaced. If the controversy is over, do we make carbon fuels more easily usable, which will put off the day of reckoning of CO2 production, which will make us continue to use fossil fuels? then why not tackle that problem directly? Campaign or have a political discussion about adding a tax on carbon fuels or putting some type of limit on CO2 emissions and, uh, and some economic fee that goes along with it like CO2 emissions tradings. That gets directly at the issue of not using as much carbon. Talking about whether you build a pipeline or not seems a fairly silly part to argue about. Because after all, it says nothing about being able to get the resources by rail car or getting them by truck. Okay, you won't let us build a pipeline? We'll do it a slightly more expensive way. It just doesn't get to the heart of the issue. And that's what you need to know about oil.